I am not so old that the sight of my mind grows blind. To this day it sees another peaceful village surrounded, attacked, burned to the ground without cause. We will travel to Yellow Spring. But I tell you this, son of evil, I give you no promise of peace. Following confiscation of the rifles and ammunition, the Navajos were removed to Yellow Springs as per your instructions. I will await further orders regarding disposition of the arms, etc., etc. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. It was a human drama with emotions and tensions running high. Patty Connie is still trying to recover physically and emotionally. They really did a number on me. From the day police forced her from her home. It was traumatic. All of a sudden, they were banging on the front door, the side door, and the back door, and they said, let us in. Patty tried to explain. She was on dry land, she had plenty of food and water, and didn't want to abandon her dogs. But it didn't matter. If you see six or eight police that look like linebackers pushing you in a corner, you're, you're in shock. I'm saying, look at all my food. I got plenty of food. They kept pushing me back, pushing me back, and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded. And I dropped it on the floor. You got a gun. Well, they punched me in the face. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at, look at what they did to me. They dragged me out of here. I really thought they were going to kill me. I really did. We went back across the lake is when we got stopped by Coast Guard and St. Tammany Sheriff's Department and the National Guard by gunpoint. We had identification. We were coming back from a house that we were taking the weapons out of so criminals wouldn't break in and steal them. And we've had uh, policemen tell us that that's what they wanted us to do, but not the sheriff in St. Tammany. They just wanted to confiscate them from us. We felt like criminals at the time when they come up to us with M16s or AR-15s, whatever it was, but there was four of them with rifles and holding on us with our hands in the air until they got in our boat. So they got on the boat and they asked us, do you have any loaded weapons? Yes, we do. They're in the two back compartments. Wayne went to show them where the gun was. And he screams, don't touch it. Don't even move. I'll get it. I thought felt like it was un-American and then we had been violated when they, you know, took, <laughs> like I say, we were shells out. We were just sitting around looking at each other and said, we just got our guns taken away from them. They took them. And they didn't have a, a right to take them. They didn't have a reason to take them. That was the thing. We did nothing wrong. But they took them anyway. He said, be thankful we're taking your guns here. Well, why should I be thankful? Well, if they catch you with them on land, they're going to take you straight to jail. We live in proof that all they have to do is say, look, this is the law. You had that feeling that you were violated. You, they took something from you. They stole something from you. That's the only way to put it. They took something that they didn't have a right to take. Would you come and get my gun for? I'm a good citizen. Marie Galatis, a Baptist minister, faced the same story in her neighborhood the same threats by thugs, the same lack of police, but she never once felt afraid. And I had my Bible and I had my gun and I knew I was safe. And I tell you what, I'm an Annie Oakley if you come fool with me or my family. I'm gonna let you have it, buddy. Marie knows she was lucky. She was never forced to leave home and didn't have her firearm confiscated. It's going against my, my constitutional rights as a citizen. But Marie remembers how upset she got when the police department threatened to take her firearm. You're letting the thugs get away with everything and you're coming to honest good citizens and taking away their protection and it is wrong, wrong, 
wrong. What I feel is that we're losing control of who we are as a nation. Robert Zoss was forced to evacuate when a tree destroyed both of his family's homes. Loaded with dogs, kids, people. Then, as they were exiting through downtown, the unexpected happened. These cops came out of nowhere, said stop, and asked, uh, do we have weapons in the car? And I told him, yeah, I do. He said, get out the vehicle, had us all sit cross-legged in front while they searched the vehicle. I had a 22 long rifle. My uh, tenant's girlfriend had a 22 pearl handle revolver given to her by her grandmother or grandfather. But Robert couldn't believe what he watched police do next to his rifle and his friend's pearl handle revolver. I saw them smash her gun given to her by grandmother, grandfather, just against the curb. The other things that they busted up, the 22 rifle they busted up, these were police officers that went too far. We didn't have any rights. I mean, they treated us like criminals. They treated us like if we were in a third world country. I was scared because these guys weren't doing it by the book. There was mayhem. Uh, New Orleans police did not have control of the city anymore. So the only plan they thought, I guess, was to take the guns away from the people. Heed the warning of what this was, you know, this is like Australia. All of a sudden, boom, they got our rights. Okay, this is a Browning 270. It's my deer rifle. And this is a Savage 7 millimeter 08. This belongs to my grandson. And this was the two rifles that they confiscated. We left about six o'clock in the morning. We started across Lake Ponce train. As we came out <clears throat> under the drawbridge, uh, a St. Tammany Parish sheriff's boat run up with their lights flashing, told us to pull over. So we pulled over and they, they pulled in about 20 foot from us. And they had five guys in the boat and they had uh, assault weapons and they uh, pointed them at us and asked if we had any weapons on board. I told them, yes, we had two weapons. They said, get at the back of the boat with your hands in the air. We're coming aboard to search. They got the guns. They opened the case and looked at them. I was standing at the back of the boat with my hands in the air. Automatic rifles pointed at you. I mean, you don't have any uh, choice. I mean, they didn't just have them pointed from their hip. They had them up at their shoulder pointed, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't playing. They asked where we were going. Told them we were contractors for Pala Interstate. We were going to New Orleans to find a route to come in with a barge. So they said, okay, we're seizing these weapons. So I said, I want a receipt for my guns. They said, no, <clears throat> we're not giving receipts. I said, if we give receipts, we'd be out here all day writing receipts for all the weapons we've confiscated. It made me angry when they told me to go get a lawyer if I wanted my guns back. That's when I really got angry. They didn't care what your rights were. They were gonna deny them. It's not America as we've known it before. It's changing. 